Hello everyone and welcome to week 14 of English 120. This week we're going to be working on creating a thesis and outline of your research paper. We're going to be reading some more in the Valley of the Moon. We're starting on book 3, chapters 1 through 5. You'll also um, be referring to the Bedford Researcher, chapter 13. It'll help you complete the assignments for this week. We'll have a discussion forum a journal prompt, and you'll be turning in your outline by the end of the week. So just to give you an overview, this is week 14, so we'll be completing our draft outline. Um, this is to get you ready for next week where you'll be turning in your draft. You'll be writing um, the first draft of your research paper. So how do you go about organizing your paper? That's the most important part of drafting. Um, so before you even begin to write your paper, you want to first figure out what order you'd like your information in. Look at the list that's um, on pages 218 to 220 to determine what organization pattern is going to best reflect the purpose of your paper. Depending on how you want to um, communicate to your reader um, will determine which organizing pattern you use. Uh, the way that you present your information should reflect the argument that you're making. You want to, and as you're doing your research, you want to, and you're finding quotations, you're finding um, sources, you want to keep track of your evidence. So the quotations and facts you've gathered from your sources. Um, and group your evidence to best support your argument. So in order to prepare yourself for that, um, in your active reading journal this week, I'd like you to complete an exercise. Um, we're going to do some clustering. Clustering can help you explore the relationships among your thesis statement, reasons, and evidence. Try this by creating a cluster. So if you look at pages 224 to 225 in the Bedford Researcher, you'll find um, a visual represent representation of this. It'll be easier for you to understand. So you might want to open that, pause this video, open that, and then continue with that open in front of you. In the middle of a, of a piece of paper, um, write your thesis statement. Now remember, um, your thesis statement should be a revision of your position statement, where you clearly state the topic that you're, you're going to explore in your paper, and what you will be arguing, arguing in your paper, and for what purpose you're going to be arguing it. You want to place all around that thesis statement, you want to place reasons, future subtopics. Um, so, for example, if you're going to be arguing that um, uh, Prize fighting was an uh, was an early form, uh, you know, because of uh, the crowds in prize fighting um, are just like modern day boxing crowds. So maybe that's what you want to argue. And uh, your thesis statement basically says that argument that um, you're going to look at by comparing um, prize fighting from the early 1900s and current day <laughs> boxing. Um, but, but, um, by comparing the crowds in prize fighting during um, prize fighting in the early 1900s and pre, um, crowds in um, boxing today, um, you hope to you know you'll you'll be proving that um, that the crowds um, are just as vicious as they once were or something like that. So you find your thesis statement and then all around it you think of reasons to support that. So you go through your evidence and find what are some of the reasons that I can use to support this. So may, one thing could be that um, crowds bet on the boxers. Um, and so you could find evidence to support this. Or maybe you want to talk about um, uh, crowds are desensitized to violence uh, because people die in the ring and it doesn't bother them. I, I don't know. Find certain reasons. And then for each of these reasons, you're going to list your evidence underneath. Um, how are you going to support what this, this reason that that, uh, and remember, every reason needs to help support your thesis. Um, you want to think about the relationships among your, your main point, your thesis statement, and the reasons, your subtopics that you're talking about, and the evidence. And you want to draw circles and lines to show these relationships. The idea is you just kind of want to get a feel for what evidence are you going to use to support the reasons that you make, and what order do you want to tell us those reasons in, in order to convince us of your thesis statement. Um, you want to annotate your cluster to indicate the nature of the relationships. 
And then just um, in your journal, all you need to do is write about this experience um, and what you learned and how it prepared you to create your outline. So speaking of outline, your assignment this week is to create an outline. An outline represents the sequence in which your reasons and evidence will appear in your paper. As you develop an outline, you'll make decisions about what order is the most effective way to present your reasons and evidence. Later, when you draft your paper, you can use your outline as a plan for writing your paper. Create an outline where you list your thesis statement at the top of the page, and you can look at page 228 for two examples of how to set up your outline. Beneath your thesis statement, begin to list the subtopics you'll be writing about in each section of your paper. Um, I'm going to show you an example on the next slide. After you complete your out outline, so after you've written your outline, I want you to write, reflect on your outline with the following, an by answering the following questions. Does my outline provide an effective organization for my document? Have I covered all of my key points? Have I addressed my key points in sufficient detail? And do any sections seem out of order? Here's an example of your, um, the, the um, format for your outline. The top of the page, you're going to write your thesis statement. Then you're going to list your subtopic or reason number one. And then the points you're going to make about it. The points and the evidence. The points and the evidence are listed under each one. Then subtopic two and subtopic three. You need at least three subtopics in your research paper. All right. And finally this week, you're going to be uh, working on a discussion forum where you're going to write your own questions, study questions for the Valley of the Moon, chapters 1 through 5, book 3, chapters 1 through 5. Um, you're going to write two questions for each chapter for a total of 10 questions and post them as a discussion post by 11.59 p.m. on Wednesday. Then you're going to need to respond to at least three of your peers' posts where you answer at least four of their questions for a total of 12. Make sure you use evidence from the text to support what you're saying. All right, that's it for this week, you guys. I look forward to seeing you online. Don't forget that if you have questions, you need to come talk to me. We're almost there. See you online.